let's take a trip back to the mid-1970s. Trucking was in its real heyday. The truck cabs were probably the coolest they ever were. The cab overs, the conventionals, all had the classic looks we long for in trucks. The aerodynamic cabs were not even on the drawing boards yet. And the trucking companies. They were so different thanks to the regulations of the Interstate Commerce Act and the Interstate Commerce Commission's enforcement. Expanding a trucking company was not easy, and starting one was even harder. To expand a trucking company, you basically had to either buy an existing truck line or prove to the Interstate Commerce Commission that the area wasn't serviced by any other truck line. Not an easy task. But somehow, Brown Transport managed to do it and started their rise in the trucking industry in the 1970s. First Gear started a series of trucks they call the Fallen Flag Series. And these trucks bring back the road names of the past that are no longer roaming the highways. Such a great idea to pay tribute to the past and get some of those old road names painted on today's highly detailed model trucks. Brown Transport started in Atlanta, Georgia and had a fairly colorful career in its relatively short lifespan. Brown started out as a regional southeast carrier, but had delusions of grandeur and expanded rapidly. <laughs> Too rapidly, as it turned out. They were able to squeeze into the trucking market by hauling carpet. I guess they were able to prove to the ICC that this commodity wasn't covered by anyone else. The ICC granted Brown authorization as a motor contract carrier. Carpet was Brown's main freight in the early days, but that didn't give them a lot of expansion potential. So they joined the general freight market with ICC authority as a motor common carrier. President Jimmy Carter's deregulation of the trucking industry in 1980 led to a free-for-all in trucking. Rate cutting, which was previously outlawed, became the standard of the day, and the cutthroats decimated the famous truck lines of the 50s, 60s, and 70s. The 1980s were especially hard on the union truck lines, as they had contracts that made cutting rates to compete almost impossible. So we saw a major shakeup in the 1980s and early 1990s. Gone were the names like Pacific Intermountain Express, McLean Trucking Company, Jones Truck Lines, Leeway Motor Freight, and Wooster Express. By the way, I've done videos on most of those in the Fallen Flag Series playlist and I'm going to do one on McLean soon. Brown Transport also perished in the 1980s, but not for the same reasons those other truck lines died. In the late 1980s, Brown Transport purchased Thurston Motor Lines and did the dumbest move any employer can make. Brown withheld the federal income taxes from the Thurston drivers, but did not pass the money on to the federal government like they were supposed to. This short-term windfall turned out to be their downfall. It didn't take long for the government to notice not getting the money and demanded that Brown Transport pay back their drivers the withheld taxes to the tune of $250 a month. As they were already spread too thin due to the rapid expansion, this was just too much to bear. Now, let's jump over to the rock quarry and look at DCP by First Gears, Kenworth K100 with dry van for Brown Transport. 
a member of the Fallen Flag series. And here we go, guys. This is the vintage Kenworth K100 108 inch double bunk sleeper pulling a 40 foot dry van trailer for Brown Transport Corp, a member of the Fallen Flag series. Comes in the standard DCP by First Gear box and it has a two piece blister and then the mural in the back. The item number on this truck is 60 1613 and it is Fallen Flags number 48. And there it is out of the package. Brown had an interesting paint scheme with this light brown color, the green and the yellow in the logo, and white trailers. Really an odd color combination. Yeah, I could say that 60s, 70s, but still, it's really odd. It, it made them stand out on the highway. And DCP replicated the brown colorings pretty well in this set, that they just really showed it off. The trailer here, it's the old standard vintage uh, dry van trailer that they've had for a long time. It's based on a Fruhoff. It has a trailer number up on the corner, on both corners on the front. It has brown on the front. <laughs> the battery boxes for the reefer that's not there. I don't know why they didn't. Uh, I guess they don't know what those are at DCP and why they keep putting them on. Or maybe there's a hole back there and they actually can't not have them on. It's got marker lights up high all around and no, none down low. It's riding on five hole bud style wheels, soft rubber tires, working suspensions. It has the Brown Transport Corp logo tampoed right there. A really, really nice tampo. And then underneath, it's a black bottom. It's got the tan brown wheels that go with brown. It's got screw down landing gear, fifth wheel, kingpin for DCP fifth wheels, air brake canisters. Looks like it could slide, but it doesn't. It has just plain black mud flaps that are hard ABS plastic. Then it has an opening back doors, and then there's a brown logo on each door. The brake lights and turn signals are tampoed orange and red, plus the red marker lights. Doors do open to show off the wooden interior. Really, I'm a big fan of this trailer. I've always liked it. It's been a nice trailer that they've had. It's a good heavy-duty trailer, and it looks really nice. It's also scaled off of the 8-foot wide trailers back in the day. Before, they were allowed to go 8 foot 6. On the curb side, it has the brown transport logo tampoed on the side in the same position. Really, really, brown had a great, great paint scheme. It was different, and it stood out, and you would remember it because it was not like anything anybody else had. I so miss the days when all of the trucking companies had really cool paint schemes. I don't know why... We have to go into this all boring stuff, but that's where we're at. Now, let's look at the tractor. Kenworth K100. It's got all the typical details you expect from DCP. The cab does tilt, but they do click hard. It has a red engine, so I guess it's got the Cummins six-cylinder. All the piping for the turbo and the exhaust is under there. Air intake and exhaust are paint chrome-plated. It's got the single air intake on this side with a chrome cap and then an air tank there for painted in black fuel tanks and this deck plate there are painted in chrome while well, they're chrome plated as is that back grill piece. It has the steps, mirrors, and air horns also chrome plated. Quarter fenders are chrome plated. Five hole bud style wheels on board. Then we go around to the front, and we have a really cool graphics. We have a truck number there. We have these orange markings on the air dam and on the front, which really stand out. Brown transport logo up there. And then Brown put their little man logo, tampoed there, on each side. A really, really a unique position for the logoing. Then we got one, two, three, four license plates tampoed on the bumper, which is chrome plated, chrome grill, Kenworth logos there tampoed, full detailed interior, which is painted in gray with a black steering wheel, and individual jewel style headlights on board. 
really sharp. And then something that was very classic of the day is all of the truck numbers. Oh man, just like having multiple license plates, every state you had to have a number that you went through. So you had these huge, huge list of numbers back then. Now we just got ICC, uh, KYU, because Kentucky still has one, and one or two other states. But it's basically down to your ICC DOT number and the license plate. One license plate per truck instead of a whole bunch like then. It's got its motor carrier number right there, tampoed on the door, and then brown. On the trailer, the brown logo was in a diamond shape. On the cabs, though, they put it in an oval. And then also difference is the transport corp underneath was written in an um, arc to mimic the oval, whereas on the other one, it's in a straight line. Really cool. Back, it just has black mud flaps, and it has the standard brake lights and other stuff tampoed on that we're used to. They did a pretty sharp job on this K100. I've always been a fan of the tooling that they did. I wish they would give us a single bunk version because there were tons and tons of single bunks, but I'll go with what we've got. Now let's hook them all back up. And to do that, we just screw this landing gear up, which is really easy. Just a couple twists on it and it screws right up. They've been using this forever. We all like it. It's really cool because it pulls the gear up so that you can have it um, displayed hitched up to the track. Or you can set it off with the trailer off by itself with the landing gear and having the trailer sitting level just like it's supposed to in the real world. Oh, one other note, it has the positionable steering, not true steering. And that, my friends, is the vintage Kenworth K100 flat top with a double bunk sleeper pulling a 40-foot dry van trailer for Brown Transport Corporation. It is number 48 in the Fallen Flag Series, DCP by First Gears, 164th scale die-cast metal truck. A really, really sweet piece and a great member of the Fallen Flag Series. On October 31st, 1989, Brown Transport Corporation filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. Eventually, Chapter 11 bankruptcy was converted into Chapter 7 Bankruptcy, and ended the meteoric rise of Brown Transport. Its assets were sold off and the employees hung out to dry. It's a shame the management of Brown was so shady. If they hadn't been, it's possible that Brown Transport Corporation would be America's largest trucking company today. The Brown Transport Corporation Kenworth K100 with dry van is sold out at first gear, but I still have one model left and you can get it with the link in the description below. Once it sells, the link will disappear forever, so don't delay. I'm Logan and I'll be back with another Fallen Flag Series truck, probably the most anticipated one in the entire series. So make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video so you don't miss my video on Consolidated Freightways.